The Nilfgaardian invasion necessitated certain steps. Meave had dispatched scrolls to her garrison commanders, based upon which they were to announce general musters. She'd hoped that by the time she reached Crydam, fresh recruits would be waiting to join her growing force. Alas, the commander of this fort, one Sergeant Griggs, had only bad news. Your Majesty, I've not the numbers to man the walls even. The call to arms brings few new recruits, and more men desert each day. Folk are terrified something awful. They don't believe in victory. They don't believe in victory? The Queen rose from behind the table, toppling her chair. Then let them hear how I smashed the blackclads at Dravagrad. Quick as can be, the commander gathered all Crydam's inhabitants in the central square. Meave stepped out in front of the crowd and recounted her most recent victory. The folk of Crydam listened with bated breath. And so, we must stand together. Fight, arm in arm. Be a wall. A wall against which blackclad hordes will be dashed. The townsfolk responded with thunderous applause, yet enthusiasm is rarely long-lived. That born of Meave's fiery words had dispersed after but a few days. No new volunteers joined the garrison, and the townsfolk hid from Sergeant Griggs to avoid being pressed into service. Neither the town's nor the Queen's own company were reinforced, and Meave left Crydam angry as a wasp. One man's battlefield is another man's ripe patch for harvest! Trust each other. Oh, 
Give me a time. We must trust each other. If the ring won't come off, just take the whole finger. One man's battlefield is another man's ripe patch for harvest! A contract on a monster. Interesting. On their way to the capital, Neve and company happened one fine day upon a lone rider. Had I been at her side, I would immediately have recognized his passionate gaze and altogether chivalrous mien. Identify yourself, sir, and your intent. Ache of Dinell, I am dubbed, and my design I never conceal. The good book says the world is a garden which the gods once conferred upon man. And we men have this garden neglected. In consequence, all manner of filth has made its lair here. Drowners, ghouls, and other kobolds. I have sworn ne'er to rest until the day when, with the gods' help, I have rid the world of these beasts and pests. I wander all lands, seeking out evil, and facing it in mortal combat. Who do we spy? A knight errant? Hmm. Just as likely a madman. How goes your hunt? Caught the trail of any monster? Monster? Too fair a term by far. An exceptionally vile worm has made its lair in nearby caverns. It is said to be the very distillation of filth. A slither in horror. A melange of the macabre. Its head, that of a wild cat of Ophir. Its maw full of spiked teeth. The wings of a bat it is said to have the tail of a scorpion, and from it, a thick venom drips. Learned men call this variety a manticore, or mardiacore. Perhaps it will be most prudent, then, to send for a witcher. A witcher? <coughs> Soulless automatons they are, all, feeding on common folk's fears. What they demand gold to do, I perform without demand of any coin. 
Sir Eik, far be it from me to discourage you. Your endeavor is noble, no doubt. But from what I have heard, manticores are exceedingly dangerous beasts. To defeat this filth alone could be a difficult task, I'll not deny. Yet try it I must, for it is what I have sworn before the gods. The care you show for my folk I greatly appreciate, Sir Ake of Donnell. Godspeed. And to you, Your Majesty. Not a scrap. Nothing to bury. Blood's all that's left behind. whole village. Just one big grave now. As Meave and company traversed the ruddy meadows, strident voices reached their ears. I beg your pardon. I've heard enough. A duel. I challenge you to a duel. A duel? Nonsense. I'd sooner lay you across my lap and give your arse a thorough flailing, you scoundrel. The Queen approached the arguing parties. Two nobles, Lords Cartwright and Mansfield. Quickly, she ascertained they were up in arms over ownership of an orchard lying between their estates. Assisting both nobles, their kinsmen, armed to the teeth, prepared to leap at each other and crush heads. Upon spotting Meave, the lords lowered their voices, bowed and presented themselves. Yet they could not keep their ire fettered long and were soon casting aspersions again. Y your Grace! Mansfield has seized it. No, no, stolen my land. Land that has been in my family for generations. It is my recompense for your reckless deeds. To burn down me mill in Furchin for a bit of sawdust in your flour? Well, I never. A bit? A bit? Oh, let me at him. Farmhands taken ill, cooks feverish, all from that manure. You are a fraud, sir. A fraud and a thief. Though she faced the not-at-all trifling matter of the Nilfgaardian invasion, Meave agreed to settle the dispute. Reynard, who knew the history of every Lyrian and Rivian family seven generations back, served as her advisor. No doubt I would find for the Cartwrights. They are in the right here, as regards the title to the land. Yet your grace must consider. The Mansfields have ever served the crown and never delayed payment of tribute. Whereas the Cartwrights... The Cartwrights are litigious charlatans who owe the royal treasury thousands, many thousands. The orchard must go to the vassal unburdened by debt. This is what I prefer, said Meave. Thus I declare it Mansfield's. But the law clearly says 
I am the Law Cartwright. Lord Cartwright moved to debate the matter further, but a snort from Raynard reminded him he stood before his liege. Mansfield, content, made an ample contribution to bolster Meave's force and the realm's defense. One of them golden sons belongs on the side of my own ship. Milf guardians make for good prisoners, good slaves too. They got black shells, but their meat and size red. Milf guardians make for good prisoners, good slaves too. Out of it. Hmm. Fair live ye is our own land, charming fertile land grand. We welcome you home, Your Majesty. Home at last, Your Grace. Mm hmm. We shall not enjoy it long, I fear. Soon we must face the black clads in the field. Yet a moment's peace we will have. After that drubbing you gave them at Dravagrad, they'll wish to rethink their strategy. Meave had ridden out of Lyria in early spring, her retinue modest, as none larger was needed for the brief summit of sovereigns. She returned now to her capital, at the head of an army that dragged behind it bandits and Nilfgaardian prisoners in chains. The whole city came out to greet her, its traders, craftsfolk, priests, also her eldest son and heir, Prince Willem. A boy who, it seemed, might never be prepared to rule. Meave and Willem rode side by side past the cheering throngs, their faces frozen in regal smiles. It was not until they reached the castle stables that they found a corner in which to speak freely, candidly. Welcome home, Mother. Content I am to see you, to be sure. And I'm happy to see you. Though I dare say I'd have been much happier to witness you leading an army towards Dravagrad. Willem, I trusted you. 
left the realm in your care. Indeed. And I, in turn, did my utmost to choose the best course for... Willem, don't be so damned courtly. There's no one else here. My son. Nilfgaard has invaded our home. We're at war. When rulers don't strive and don't choose, when rulers grab their swords and shields and ride out to defend their subjects. You didn't let me finish. All right. Say what you wanted to, please. I feared I'd be hasty, Mother, and I didn't want to be. When we got word of the invasion, the lords convened at the castle. They demanded I hear them out. They wanted to give me counsel. If I'd rushed into the field to confront the foe, I'd, I'd have been half blind to the situation, not known all the options I had at my disposal. A ruler never knows all the options, yet he must decide and act nonetheless. I need to prepare. I'll see you at the Council of Peers. And indeed she did, when the peers convened in the throne room. Surrounded by animal hides and Zeracanian tapestries, the Lord stood in tense silence, awaiting the Queen. When her figure filled the doorway, they fawningly prostrated themselves. We've myriad matters to resolve, so I trust you're well rested. Whatever the case, I've no doubt we shall meet the dawn afore we're done. Firstly, we must ask assistance. Pen a letter to King Demavend. Scribe, take this down. Dear... What? Uncle? Cousin? Blast. Again. I, Meave, by the God's grace, Sovereign of Rivia and... Your grace? Mother? The peers and I, we've come to propose another solution. Yes, out with it. We wish to acknowledge Nilfgaard's authority, pledge fealty to the Emperor. I beg your pardon. The black-clad hordes outnumber our forces manifold, and they're far better equipped. We stand not the slightest chance against them in open... You will not lecture me about Nilfgaard's army, my son. All you know of them you garnered from coloured renderings, whereas I faced them at Dravagrad. I faced them and crushed them. But your grace, the losses. For this fleeting victory in which you delight, how many of your subjects had to perish? Bend a knee afore the Emperor, and you shall spare a thousand. Nay, never. Understood, Caldwell, not ever. I'd hoped to persuade you, but it seems I've failed. Nonetheless, the die's been cast. We've signed the accord with Nilfgaard. Our noble lord stand with me. The blood left Meave's face. She had realized her son, who had ever professed to detest politics and shirked his duties as crown prince, had just stabbed her in the back. As had her entire court. What is this? Treason to my eyes! The gallows is what awaits you. Willem rules Lyria now. And should you not acquiesce and approve the accord, I fear only you, milady, shall have the pleasure to meet the hangman. Don't get ahead of yourself, Caldwell. My mother will not be harmed. Not one hair on her head. Understood? Confine the queen to the tower. You err deeply, my son. The queen was confined to a cell. Gilded armor she had traded for a simple robe, a courtly retinue for a swarm of rats. She was the very picture of misery. At the window of her cell, gripping the bars, Meave stood powerless, her anger so great she wept and wailed. Her Lyria was free no more.
Have I come at a bad time? Demons take you, Coldwell. You've long been at this scheme, haven't you? You left the strays of Sparla to roam the realm, to forage, so that I would have to look to them. And thus gained your cohorts the time they needed to complete Lyria's sail to Nilfgaard. You've seen through it all, that's clear. After the fact, of course. But still. <laughs> Villain. You turned him. How? The boy's not fit to wear the crown. Hasn't sufficient wit nor valor. I know this. You know this. Just... he knows it not. Willem fancied himself a statesman, which terribly to prove he was one. I made it possible. I've been amply rewarded, I have. Palatine since just yesterday, in fact. You'll have neither my blessing nor congratulations. Sorry to disappoint you. I seek neither. I've come for another reason. To bid you adieu. Willem does not seek your death. Does not even fathom it, as you well know. Moreover, his resolve will wilt in time, and he'll wish to free you. So, come the morn, when the young king rides out to pledge fealty for General Epdahi, you shall use your bed linens to hang yourself. I see. You wish to see me bow before you, lie prostrate, beg you for mercy. Plow yourself with a pike, Caldwell. And you needn't send your thugs. I'll not falter nor hesitate. I'll take my own life. Adieu, Your Grace. And use your last evening wisely. Meave felt a rush of despair yet bit her lip to mute any weeping. No, she would not give Caldwell the satisfaction. Morning arrived with the sound of footsteps in the corridor. Neve rose from her cot and stood in the center of her cell. She was prepared for anything. Well, nearly anything. The, the Duke of Dogs? Titles seem senseless under the circumstances, don't you think? Let's forgo them. I'm Gascon. Has Caldwell sent you? To kill me? A no and a no. Actually, you're free. How shall I put this? That cad, Count Caldwell, used yours truly and the strays as bait in a scheme aimed at kicking your shapely backside off your throne. Now, I'm hardly vindictive. First to forgive, in fact. Take your threat to send me to the gallows. Forgotten already. Yet being played for a fool, I cannot abide. So when the strays freed me, I knew what I'd do to spite the Count before I disappeared. I'd free you. That's to say, on one condition. You've got to request it of me, my lady. Courteously. For my realm, I will do this, and much, much more. Even Bower for a brigand. Thus I beg you, Gascon, Duke of Dogs, grant me my freedom. Ha! Incredible! I've lived to see someone grovel with dignity. The true ruler you've got to be. You are free. And grateful. Now please let me pass. I must get to the city jail at once. Would you look at this woman? Free her from one prison, she flies off to the next. They hold Reynard there, and if I've any ally left, anyone who's not betrayed me, it's him. I must get him out. Hold, my lady. Unarmed, alone. Have I any other option? 
Hmm, in a sense. See, they locked a few strays in the city pits, too. Got a common cause, I'd say. Care to join forces? The Queen took Gascon up on his offer. Then she, Gascon, and the strays snuck through the city to its dungeon. Reynard had not wavered for a moment in his devotion to the Queen. Never the slouch, he had also not lost any time. I've inquired among the other arrested soldiers. Many are prepared to fight, even die at your side, Your Grace. Seems they may yet get their chance. But now we must flee. All of us. Yet in leaving the jail, the company ran into trouble. When Caldwell's cutthroats had failed to find Meave in her cell waiting for her secret execution, they had informed the Count. He, in turn, dispatched patrols into the streets. The Queen and her cohorts ran into one such unit. Blast. We shan't outwin them. Two arms! <laughs> 